Today we're going to get into a 1989 Grand Wagoneer. All right, why are we gonna do this? Well, transmission's leaking. You can see underneath, yeah, you can put a light on it. Yeah, good size leak. Yeah, it looks like some oil as well, but most of that is transmission. So, let's go outside and see how many places we can see where this Jeep has been parked. <laughs> Maybe. You know, one thing good about having a lifted vehicle, I don't need to put it on jack stands. I might put it up there just to do it anyway. Always remember to chalk your wheel. As soon as I let this go, the parking. Since it's in park, it's not gonna work. I do have the parking brake on. It works sometimes. Vacuum actuated full wheel drive system. Why? Give me a cable or a lever. All right, there's our culprit. This nasty, disgusting thing. Uh, we're getting ready to throw this outside and hit it with a pressure washer. What we want to do before we go out there is to cover up all these holes. The cooler lines, the output shaft, everything needs to be covered up because you do not want water inside your transmission. So let's go. Are you recording? Oh, yeah. you are. Yeah. <laughs> so, is it okay if I... All right, main culprit. Is this guy right here. Underneath that little shifter right there is a seal. On the new seal, <laughs> big giant box. Actually, let's see if I have a part number. Part number one, four, five, eight, two. Anyway, big box for, I can open it with one hand. Big box, small little get, uh, seal. So that's gonna sit in there. First, you gotta get that off. All right, let's get this guy off. Supposed to pop right off. Does it? No. One thing we do have here is a a little pin or a uh, C-clip type of thing. So we need to get that off. And I'm gonna need a screwdriver. One thing that's very important, so that's the seal that we need right there. That's what we're going to re be replacing. Now, one thing you do need to realize that all this dirt has the potential of getting it down into your transmission, and you do not want that to happen. So, you don't want to just 
just use a pick something like that just kind of clean it out as best you can and then there's actually a tool to get that out do I have said tool no no I do not so we're going to adapt overcome and figure that out stay tuned All right, there she goes. So here's the what's left of it. Kind of ripped it out of there. So the one thing I was definitely trying not to do was scar up the uh, the casing right here. So what I'm gonna do now is actually clean all this crap out because it is nasty in there. Replace my seal. I hope it's not. There should be another seal right there that they did not give me. So it looks like I might need to get another seal. <sighs> okay. Stay tuned for new, more parts. All right, I'm back. I think I figured it out. Now, my problem. I'm getting ready to put this that seal in, but that seal was leaking as well. So I had a generic seal kit. that I think I found one that actually might fit. But we're going to find out. But we need to put this guy in here. So just use a regular socket. Tap, 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 tap. Uh, make sure she's in nice and straight. There we go. Look at that. Pretty. Beautiful. All right. Let's put everything back together. Maybe put it back in the Jeep one day. All right. Pin is in. Right there. Now let's put the kick down shifter on. Which, to be honest with you, when I looked at it underneath when I was taking it apart, I don't think it was even hooked up right. We're going to find out. All right, here's one little thing that you need to think about. When you're doing work like this, always get like assortment of O-rings. Um, here's the other box. Grommets, because it will save you a lot of time because this is an 89 Grand Wagoneer. Nobody has parts for it, at least not for transmissions. Like this little seal right here. It's very simple seal. They don't have it, AutoZone. O'Reilly's, Napa, uh, it just, they just don't have it. So you do make do with what you got. All right, let's get this changed. It's perfect. Let's put this in the truck. Look at that. It is in there. It's the way it's supposed to be. Fantastic. All right, got some brackets. We got the transfer case, cross member, exhaust. Cooler lines, linkages. We got a lot of stuff to get up. But hey, the big thing's in there. Transmission is in. Hey, another day, another dollar. Here we go. So this is the linkage for the Wagoneer. Now, on this particular one, all of these plastic piece of garbage clips. This one here, see this one's all broken. Well, it's kind of hard to find these, so apparently. Maybe I just didn't look close enough. So, 
we're going to find a different solution. So we're going to put the what's left of that up there because it does actually hold as a um, a bushing. So we're going to use a washer. Yep, grade eight. That's what I got. So we're going to stick that on there, and then we're going to use these little tiny. See if I can hold it up without little clips, little C clamps here. And that is going to be my replacement. Because if you can look at here, it has that little groove. That's what we're going to use. We're going to use that groove. And just put this baby on. So, let's put it in the truck. All right. Well, transmission's in. The transfer case is in. The exhaust is hooked up. Pretty much everything is connected that I can see and that I can remember. So, just filled it up with ATF. Uh, little tip. Make sure you look it up. I was completely wrong on the type of transmission fluid I needed for this. So I did look it up and it is uh, Dextron 4 that I needed. And uh, what I had on hand was 3. So I had to run up to the store and go get uh, go get some more. Also, the transfer case uh, uses Dextron 3 for the transfer case. Uh, I didn't know that. I had some 8090 I was going to throw in there. It's a good thing I looked. So make sure you do look. But... We're going to fire it up, see if it actually goes in gear. We'll see. All right, cross your fingers. That doesn't sound right. Let's take a look. All right, well, she's running again. I have it in neutral because I just checked the fluid. And of course, I needed to add some. Uh, and of course, I ran out. <laughs> so we're going to get some more. But it should be enough in there, too. Oh, she's in gear. Okay, I think I figured out why it sounded so god awful when I was starting it earlier. Now, I was a little bit afraid because I had to take the transmission out twice. The first time, well, obviously to fix the leak. The second time is because when I put it back in, the counterweight on the pressure plate was hitting one of the bosses on the torque converter. So when I was turning the motor over to be able to put the bolts back in on the torque converter, they were all one piece uh, because I was pushing it there. I was kind of thinking maybe I bent the pressure plate. Uh, <clears throat> I went in and took the starter off and it looks like it is an aftermarket. Um, I didn't put it in, but uh, there's a small bit of adjustments, almost like shims. Uh, I adjusted it all the way in, cranked it up and it did beautifully. Something else that I did notice is that the kick down uh, linkage wasn't even hooked up. So that could be the reason why I just stayed in third gear. So. Anyway, um, yeah, project done. So one other thing, um, I did not record a lot of the installation of the transmission and transfer case and stuff like that, mostly because this is a family show. Doing it by yourself on your back with some homemade tools that <laughs> could have used a little bit more engineering. Yeah, it was uh, challenging, so to speak. But we got it in there. Um, we're going to get some more fluid and then run it down the street try to get all the air pockets out. Um, I did drain the uh, cooler lines, uh, drain the fluid, and of course trying to put it in there. The torque converter fell out and of course created more air pockets. So I filled that back up, uh, put it all back together, and we will see how she does. So that's going to wrap up this particular episode. And don't forget to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. I say that every time. But she might be back in action and hopefully not leaking. So as of right now, she is um, should be good to go. But you'll see more of this here coming up soon. Maybe I'll do a walk around and see what is going on with this thing. There has been a few modifications. But, um, but other than that, 
I think she's ready to go. Anyway, tune in. Uh, we'll have a next project coming up soon. Uh, we might have a, uh, a gladiator coming in here, uh, maybe doing a two inch lift on that. We also have a Toyota Tacoma that just why Toyota? Why? So we'll have that and we will uh, probably have a follow up because I think I'm going to get a tuner for that to to Toyota Tacoma. It's a third gen. Uh, if you look that up, you'll see why I need a tuner. Uh, that drives me nuts. Um, but we'll get into that. Anyway, stay tuned. We'll have some fun. Later.